Okay, good morning. Today's lesson, lesson 1.2, we are going to be rounding to the nearest 10 or 100. And so our essential question for today's lesson is how can you round numbers? So to unlock the problem, when you round a number, you find a number that tells you about how much or about how many. So rounding is not an exact answer, it's something that's close. Mia's baseball bat is 32 inches long. What is its length rounded to the nearest 10 inches? So one way we can round is to use a number line. And so on this number line, we see part A, round 32 to the nearest 10. And we see that it goes on the number line 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. And in between, I see one line in between each of the tens. That number in between stands for the fives place. So 35, 25, 15, 5. So 32. 32 would be closer to 30. And so it's to the left of the halfway mark in between 30 and 40. So 32 goes here. And it says, find which tens the number is between. 32 is between 30 and 40. So then ask yourself, 32 is closer to what than it is to what? So is 32 closer to 30 or is it closer to 40? Again, we're looking at 32. It should be obvious that 32 is closer to 30 than it is to 40. So 32 rounded to the nearest 10 is 30. So the length of Mia's bat rounded to the nearest 10 inches is 30 inches. Okay, we can also use a number line to round numbers to the nearest hundreds. And so in this case, I see that my number line starts All right, sorry about that little mix up there. All right, so rounding 174 to the nearest 100. You notice that on the number line, we start at 0, then 100, then 200, then 300. And then I notice that there's marks midway through each of the hundreds. So halfway between 0 and 100 is 50. Halfway between 100 and 200 is 150 and halfway between 200 and 300 is 250. So find which hundreds the number 174 is between. 174 is in between 100 and 200. 174 is it closer to 200 or is it closer to 100? 174 to 200 it takes about one finger. To go back to 100, it takes about two fingers. So it's closer to 200. So it's closer to 200 than it is to 100. So 174, run to the nearest 100, is 200. Okay, so that's one way we can round. We can use a number line and find which number which hundreds or which tens the number is closest to. Okay, on page 10. So let's practice this skill of using a number line. So the first one says 718 rounded to the nearest 10 and 100. Locate and label 718 on the number lines. 
so nearest 10. So halfway between 700 and 710 is 705. And halfway between 710 and 720 is 715. And that's just to help us indicate where we want to go. So 718. 718 would be to the right of 715. It would be right about there. So we're going to write in 718 there. And then 718 is closer to 720 than it is to 710. Closer to 720 than it is to 710. So if we're going to round 718 to the nearest 10, we're going to round it to 720. Now, part B, we're going to take the same number, 718, and we're going to round it to the nearest 100. And this time, I see that my 700 and 800 are the 200s I'm going to be using. 750 is exactly in the middle. So each of these lines must be worth 10. 710, 720, 730, 740, 750, 760, 770, 780, 790, 800. And so now we need to find 718. Which one is it closer to? I'm going to go ahead and fill out the first side of this because I know that each of them are worth tens. So 718 is going to be right about there. And I need to find out, is 718 closer to 700 or 800? Well, to go back to 700 is only about a finger. To go from 700 to 800 takes about three, three fingers width to go from 718 to 800. So it's clearly closer to 700. So 718 is closer to 700 than it is to 800. So 718 rounds to 700. Okay, so that's using a number line to round. Now another way we can round numbers is to use place value. And if we look at the box to the right here, it'll tell you the directions for rounding numbers. Okay, so one, we want to find the place to which you want to round. In other words, do you want to round the number to the tens, to the hundreds, so on. So find the place to which you want to round. Then look at the digit to the right. So if I'm rounding to the tens place, I'd look at the ones place, which would be to the right. If I'm rounding to the hundreds place, I'd look to the digit in the tens place to decide if I'm going to go up or down. And so the basic rule is, if the digit to the right is less than 5, the digit in the rounding place stays the same. We, we say that's rounding down. If the digit is 5 or greater, and I'm talking about the digit to the right, if the digit to the right is 5 or greater, the digit in the rounding place increases by 1. And we call that rounding up. And then we can't just drop off the numbers to the right of the place we want to round to. So we're going to replace the digits to the right of the rounding place with zeros to maintain the, the value of the number. So let's take this and look at our first example. And in our example, it says round 63 to the nearest 10. And then we have a think box, and it says the digit in the ones place tells if the number is closer to 60. Or 70. So the digit we want to find, we want to round to, is the 6. The 6 is in the tens place. We have six tens in this problem. The digit to the right, the 3, tells us whether we're going to go up or down with, with the tens place. All right, so in our directions, it said if the digit to the right of the rounding place. The rounding place is 6. It's a tens place. So we're going to look at the ones place. If it's less than 5, we keep the digit in the tens place the same. So here we're going to say 3 is less than 5. So the tens digit stays the same. And we're going to write 6 as the tens digit. 
and then we're going to write 0 as the 1's difference. So 63 gets rounded to 60. Part B, round 457 to the nearest 100. So this time our rounding place is the hundreds. I have four hundreds. I'm going to look to the digit to the right of what I want to round to to decide if I'm going to round up or keep the digit the same or what we know as rounding down. So the digit in the tens place tells it the number is close to 400 or 500. So five is the same as five. So if the number is five or greater, we're going to increase the rounding place by one. So we're going to increase the four hundreds by one, and we're going to replace the tens and the ones with zeros. So 457 is closer to 500. Okay, so now let's continue with some of our book practice for today. And so Sharon shows it says locate and label 46 on the number line. Round to the nearest 10. Okay, so it takes some time to find where 46 would go. I like to go ahead and write in the what those little marks in between me. And so 46. Oh, okay, well 46 is the next number past 45. So I'm going to put 46 right there. 46 is between 40 and 50. So 46, is it closer to 50 or 40? 46 is closer to 50 than it is to 40. If it's to the right of the midpoint, it's going to the next 10. If it's less than the midpoint, you're going to go back. So 46 is rounded to nearest 10 is 50. 19, rounded to the nearest 10. So draw your number line. And we want 0, 10, 20. And then we want our mid marks. So we got 5 and 15. So where would 19 go on our number line? 19 would be right here, almost on 20. So then we ask ourselves, is 19 closer to 20 or is it closer to 10? And in this case, we should say it's closer to 20. Sixty-six. Well, I know the two tens that it's in between is 60 and 70. The midpoint mark is 65. So where would 66 go? 66 on the number line would be right there. So is 66 closer to 70 or is it closer to 60? Okay, and we said that if the number is to the right, of the midline or the halfway mark that is closer to the digit to the right. So 66 is closer to 70. 51. Well, the tens before 51 is 50. The tens after 51 is 60. Halfway in between 50 and 60 is 55. So where would you put 51? 51 is close. To 50. So to round 51. Is 51 closer to 50 or 60? And we can also look at the midpoint here. We know halfway in between them is 55. The 51 is to the left of 55, so we are going to keep the tens place the same and have 50. Okay, 463. Rounded to the nearest hundred. So this time, let's just practice using 
our second method of place value. 463 rounded to the nearest hundred. So I want to round to the 400 spot. I'm going to look at the digit to the right. And at the digit to the right is 5 or greater, I'm going to round up. So 6 is greater than 5. So I'm going to change the 4 to 500 and change the 10s and the 1s to zeros. So 463 is closer to 500. 202 to the nearest 100. So I want to round to the 2 because it's in the hundreds place. I'm going to look to the digit to the right and 0 is less than 5. So 0 less than 5, I'm going to round down. And so rounding down means to keep the, the digit in the rounding place the same and change the tens and ones to zeros. So 202 is closer to 200. 658. The six is in the hundreds place. Look to the digit to the right. Compare it to five. And in this case, 5 equals 5. Anything that's 5 or greater, we're going to increase the rounding place. The digit that's in the rounding place is 6. So we're going to increase that by 1. Change the 10s and the 1s to zeros. So 658 is closest to 700. All right, let's continue. Number 10, 10 through 12. Locate and label 548 on the number line. Round to the nearest 100. 548. So let's see what each of these lines are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, well, I know that there it takes 10 tens to equal 100. So that's 410, 420, 430, 440, 450. I'm just going to go ahead and mark the 450 mark because that's halfway in between. 460, 470, 480, 490, 500. 510, 520, 530, 540, 550. All right, now 548 then would be right about there. And I need to ask myself is 548 closer to 500 or 600? If the halfway mark is 550, 548 is to the left, so I'm going to go keep go back to the 500. 548 is between 500 and 600. 548 is closer to 500 than it is to 600. 548 rounded to the nearest hundred again is 500. All right, so now let's use place value to round 13 through 15. 576 rounded to the nearest 10. 576 to the nearest 10. The 7 is in the 10th place. Look to the digit to the right. Compare it to 5. The digit to the right of the rounding place is greater than 5. So increase the rounding place by 1. Change the 1's place to 0. So 580. Then it says round 576 to the nearest 100. So this time I'm looking at the 500's. And I'm going to look at the 710's. I'm going to compare the 710's to 5. 710's is larger. So I'm going to increase the 5 by 1, and I'm going to change the 10 and the 1s to zeros. 298. 298 rounded to the nearest 10. The 9 is in the 10s place. I'm going to look to the digit to the right, which is 8. 8 is greater than 5, so I'm going to increase the 9 by 1. And in this case, that would be 10. But obviously, I don't put 10 tens in the tens place. So actually, I'm going to change that to 300. 
and then 298 to the nearest hundred. Two is in the hundreds place. Look to the digit to the right. Nine is greater than five. So nine greater than five tells me to increase the rounding place, which is two in this case, to three. Change the tens and the ones to zero. So 298 is closest to 300. Okay, 844. 844 to the nearest 10. We have four tens, four ones. We are now going to compare four to five. And four is less than five. So if the digit to the right is less, we're going to keep the rounding place the same. And we're going to change the digit in one place to zero. So 844 is closest to 840. Okay, now they want us to round it to the nearest hundred. So 844, I'm going to underline the 8 because that's in the tens place. i ah, sorry, in the hundreds place. 8 is in the hundreds place. I'm going to circle the digit to the right, which is the tens place. And the 4 is in the tens place. So again, I'm going to compare 4 to 5. 4 is less than 5, so that tells me to keep the rounding place the same. Change the tens and the ones this time to zero because we're rounding to the nearest hundred. Okay, let's move on to page 12. Okay, on number 16 through 18, it says, use the table. So on the table here, I have visitors to the giraffe exact exhibit. And on Sunday, it says that there were 894 visitors. On Monday, 793. Tuesday, 438. Wednesday, 362. Thursday, 839. Friday, 725. And on Saturday, 598. So we're going to use those numbers from this table to answer these questions. So on which day did about 900 visitors come to the giraffe exhibit? So on these, we're basically looking at the hundreds place in all of these numbers. So the hundreds place. And so which of these numbers would get rounded to 900. 894, the 9 is greater than 5, so 894 gets rounded to 900. 793, the 9 is greater than 5, so 793 is 800. 438, the 3 is less than 5, so the rounding place stays the same. So this is going to be 400. 362, the 6 is greater than 5, so we're going to round the rounding place up by 1, and that one is close to 4. So 400. 839, I look at the 3, it is less than 5, so that will become 800. 725, I look at the 2, it's less than 5, so 725 gets rounded to 700 and 568 look at the 9 it's greater than 5 so the rounding place increases by 1 and we get 600 all right so we rounded all of our numbers to their nearest hundreds place and now our question was on which day did about that's a key word about means Estimate, which means we're rounding. We want, a, we want a close number, not the exact number. And so the only one that I see that got rounded to 900 was the first day, Sunday. 
And then it says 17 to the nearest 10. How many visitors came to the exhibit on Sunday? To the nearest 10. Okay, so this time, so if we look at these numbers again, but this time we look at the tens place. So the tens place is in the middle of all these numbers, but it says Sunday. So I really don't need all these other numbers right now. So I'm just looking at 894. So nine is in the tens place. I look at the four. The four is less than five. So the rounding place, 9, stays the same. So 890. So to the nearest 10, how many visitors came to the exhibit on Sunday? 890 giraffes. Or 890, <laughs> 890 visitors. There weren't 890 giraffes. 18. On which two days did about... 800 visitors come to the giraffe exhibit each day. Well, at the beginning of our work, we rounded the numbers to the nearest hundreds. And so we really just have to then find which ones that came out to 800. I see 800 there, and I see 800 there. So Monday and Thursday. Cole said that 555 rounded to the nearest 10 is 600. What is Cole's error? All right, so let's, number 19, let's use the space in the right, on the right-hand side here in the right, where it says write math, show your work. And we got 555, and we're supposed to round it to the nearest 10. So rounding to the nearest 10, I would look to the digit to the right. I would use the 5 and compare it to 5. Well, anything that's 5 or greater, I'm going to increase the place that we're rounding to by 1. But the place I'm rounding to is the 10s. So this would be 560, not 600. So Cole's error must be that he rounded to the nearest 100. Okay, so the answer should be 560, 560, rounded to the nearest 10. And Cole must have rounded to the nearest 100. All right, number 20. Write five numbers that round to 360 when rounded to the nearest 10. Five numbers that round to 360. We'll round it to the nearest 10. So let's see. 360 is in between 350 and 700. The glare, you can't really see 70, 370. Let's try a different marker here. I'm sure you can see that. 360 is 7. All right, that's better. Okay, so we know if we were using a number line that halfway between these would be 365 and 355. We know that anything to the left of 355 would get rounded to 350. 
but we don't want any numbers to the left. We know that any numbers from 355 over get rounded up. So 356, 357, 358, 359 would all get rounded up to 360. We also know that any numbers to the right of 365 would go to 370. Any numbers to the left of 365 or that are less than 365 would go back to 360. So I could also say 364, 363, 362, 361. So all of these numbers would work. Okay, and so again, why does that work? Because remember, we're rounding to the nearest tens place. So the digits I've underlined are what we're rounding to. The digits to the right tell you whether to round up or down. And so in this case, the 6 is greater than 5, so I would increase the 5 by 1, which makes it 360. That's the same situation for 357. The 7 is greater than 5, so 350 becomes 360. 358, the 8 is greater than 5, so 350 becomes 360. 359, the 9 is greater than 5, so 359 becomes 360. And it is just the opposite in a sense for the smaller numbers, the ones that we're going to round down. 364. This time, the 4 is less than 5, so the digit that we're rounding to, the 6, stays the same. So 364 stays as 360. 363, it's closer to 360. 362, this number is closer to 360 than it is to 370. And it goes for the same for 361. 361 is closer to 360. All right, and the last one. Select the numbers that round to a hundred. Select all that apply. So, in a sense, we're looking at all of these places. Right now, that's 0, 38. There's, there's no hundreds in 38. There's no hundreds in 83. All right. So, we're looking to the digit to the right of each of the rounded rounding places, which is the hundreds. 3 is less than 5. So that's going to stay the, stay the same. It's going to stay, well, actually, in this case, I'd round to 0. There, there is no hundreds. Okay. 162. The 6 is greater than 5. So I would increase the 1 by 2. Uh, increase the 1 to 2, so 162 becomes 200. 109, the 0 is less than 5, so I would keep the 1 the same, and it would become 100 as a rounding digit. 83, 8 is greater than 5. So if I compare 8 and 5, that means I'm going to increase the digit in the hundreds by 1. Well, right now it's 0. So increasing that, it becomes 100. So select the numbers that round to 100. C and D both round to 100. Okay, so your independent work in Go Map today, lesson 1.2, will have very similar problems. So use your completed math book to help you. If you have any questions, you can stop and ask. And you can also, again, like I mentioned in Lesson 1.1, you can use the step-by-step. -step. You can also use the video examples in GoMath. Or you can obviously ask, ask me for additional help. 
right, so good luck, and I'll see you tomorrow morning for lesson 1.3.